I'm Neil Hagen. I was born in 1933 in the midst of the Great Depression. I have a, I think my personality when I think about it is probably jovial. I enjoy telling jokes. I enjoy uh, laughing and uh, having a good time with other people. And uh, I have a, a, probably an A personality. I've been, I've been married uh, for 56 years. Uh, 56 very beautiful years, uh, in which uh, I've had a wonderful wife and two wonderful children, and uh, uh, it's been a very progressive step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process towards the future. I have uh, three grandchildren. Uh, one of them is uh, 20 years old and is uh, a senior at Youngstown University. I have two other ones that are in uh, uh, a Catholic university, a Catholic school, high school here. Both uh, one named Chad and the other named Carl. Both of these boys are very heavily involved in sports and are also very good academically. When I was younger and going to high school, I played basketball, baseball, and softball. Uh, I would have played football, but our school, high school, was small enough that we couldn't uh, couldn't field a football team. So uh, uh, those three sports were the major sports for the high school attended, which was Somerset Township High School in southeastern Ohio. You know, I've got a lot of activities I like. I like to do many things, but probably my favorite activity as I grew older is golf. I love to golf and. Uh, if I had to, I would love to spend every moment. I'm, I'm also like to fish, and if I could get back to doing that for some time, I would do that also. In my uh, collegiate career, I uh, attended uh, for two years uh, General Motors Institute of Technology in Flint, Michigan, uh, and then finished up uh, going to local schools here and at uh, Youngstown University, where, where I graduated. I have a degree in business administration, but I uh, trained as an engineer, and uh, all my training and work was as an engineer at uh, General Motors. After working for 40 years at uh, General Motors, I retired and opened my own business. I became a manufacturer's representative, and for 10 years I uh, serviced all of the automotive trade in wiring uh, and uh, uh, automotive wire. I was in the I was in the National Guard, uh, the High National Guard, for four years. Uh, and part of that time was I met my wife during that time. And as we dated for some length of time, we set our marriage date. And because the draft was in effect at that point, we wound up. I wound up being drafted two days before we were to be married. And since I had some rank in the National Guard as a sergeant, I went down and enlisted, which allowed us to postpone the induction date for my military service onto the uh, two weeks after the wedding. So we managed to manage that just very, very close. Uh, it was it was a close. My <clears throat> my poor wife was almost ready to to collapse by the time we got this finished. While I was in the army, I was stationed in uh, Germany. I was a medic, and uh, the place I was stationed at was on Sigurdhof in in uh, western Germany, and we ran a hospital train which went down and picked up patients all over Europe. Uh, even down into Italy, and we down through the Breno Pass into Italy, picked up patients in Naples. I remember one time we picked up a patient in Naples, uh, and he had uh, been listed as a schizophrenic. Now, at that point back then, uh, the Army had a discharge clause which is called Section 8. If you could prove you were crazy, then you were discharged with no bad discount or no bad discharge of any type, you're simply listed as as a, a not uh, 
fit for the service discharge. We picked up this individual in Naples and uh, for four days I talked to him on the way back to the main hospital in Germany and all I got from him was just plain ordinary talk as, a, as if he was an individual very brilliant. And finally on the fourth day we were approaching the hospital he was supposed to be discharged to, I said to him, you're shooting for a section eight, aren't you? And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, yes, you are. You, I've talked to you for four days. You're as sane as I am. And he said, no, no. Now, this was in 1958 and at the time that, that uh, the Russians had put up their first satellite. And he turned to me and he said, I'll tell you what happened. He said, I went to the moon. And I said, what? He said, I went to the moon. And he proceeded to tell me about all, everything on the moon, how he got to the moon, who he went to the moon with. Well, by the time we got to the hospital and discharged, he had me believing he went to the moon. Uh, that's one of the one of the things I can tell you about. About there are there are many instances when uh, we had uh, we had probably the craziest day. If you ever watched uh, Mesh, that was very close to what our outfit was like in uh, Germany. Uh, it was a medic outfit, uh, and they used to we'd get uh, parade uh, notifications where a vice president was coming in or something like that, or a general was going to be at the post. And everybody was supposed to go out and march and parade, except the medics. And we never, we never marched. They didn't want to see any two of us try to get together because we couldn't march. There is a, uh, a quote that I, I like to stand by. I've stood by it for a long time. It's called, To Thy Own Self Be True. Because if you can be true to yourself and be honest and true to yourself, then be true and a good friend to others at the same time. I've uh, had a lot of heroes in, in the time that I've been going through this veil of tears. But the, probably the greatest hero I ever had and the greatest one I respected the most was General Eisenhower. General Eisenhower successfully fought the Nazis into a stop and won the Second World War practically on his own. Then he became President of the United States and a period of prosperity and peace followed. Uh, and it's enough for anyone to respect that kind of an individual. You know when you have, when you work at places like General Motors you expect some challenges and you expect some some types where you have some real problems. I at one time had charge of the fusible link which went into the fuse circuits in the General Motors vehicles. I received a call one day saying that we were almost prepared for a callback because the fusible links were not working and cars were starting to burn up. Uh, callback can cause millions of dollars of problems. I immediately started a whole series of testing and could find nothing wrong with the fusible link no matter what we tried. After further testing, both at here and at Chevrolet, we finally found that the trouble was not there but in the overloaded circuits that had happened at Chevrolet. It was a very meaningful time for me because it worried me to the point where I thought if I did not prove that I was successful in this point I would probably be discharged. You know if I could change some things in the world I'd love to do it but probably the most thing I'd love to change the most would be poverty. We can eliminate poverty, we can eliminate wars, we can eliminate, we can eliminate people suffering day by day because there's not enough to eat, no place to live, and squalor. So if I can eliminate poverty, I think that's the greatest thing to be done. I have lived a lot of long life here, as you can see, and a lot of people 
think they know me very well, but, the, but there's some things they probably don't know about me. I, for instance, uh, sing. Uh, I'm told I have a very good voice, and uh, at one point I was uh, sang for weddings uh, across the state. At another point, I was, chat I was uh, a cantor in our church. Uh, I also play uh, about uh, five different instruments. Uh, I play the trumpet, I play the organ, uh, somewhat on the piano, I play the guitar, I play the harmonica, I play the uh, I play banjo. As you look back on the 70 or so years I've been around and so on and so forth, and I look and look around and I see many things that happened to me and what many things I've done, probably my greatest achievement was my family. Without my family I would have been nothing. Without the love and respect of my wife and my children, I still would have been nothing. And when you reach the point where you retired and, and are looking back on all the things you've done, your family becomes the paramount reason for living. And after the interview I had with Neil Hagen, the final question was asked. In one word, describe yourself. I'm handsome. <laughs>